Welcome to my Texas workshop. I'm Randy Lammers. I'm Aaron Keevan. This is Worth Knowing. Welcome back to a new season of Worth Knowing. We have something very special and real exciting for you today, some new technology. So think about this. How would you like to produce from concept to production in hours rather than weeks or even months? Or take complex parts that are multi parts and make them into one single part. Reduce cost on single use items like jigs or a prototype or special fixtures and do all of this at the strength you need for your application. So I have with me today a couple of guests from our Worth Additive group. This is Carter Rhodes and Jacob Ayers. Gentlemen, welcome to the Worth Knowing Show. Thank you for having us. Thanks, Randy. Oh, you're very, very welcome. So what is additive manufacturing or also what we call 3D printing. Additive manufacturing is just another style of manufacturing, much like uh, subtractive manufacturing, which would be like CNC machining, where you're starting with a block of material and removing material slowly with a cutting tool to arrive at your net shape. Another form of manufacturing that's really common would be uh, formative manufacturing, and so that is where we are starting with a mold, and then we are injecting material into that, having it cool or harden, removing that mold, and that's how we arrive at our net shape. Got that. Additive manufacturing is different in that we are starting with a blank slate. We are adding material layer by layer, and then this can be done in a number of different ways. And so, what kind of 3D printing are we gonna be looking at today, Jacob? Uh, today we're gonna be talking about fused filament fabrication. FFF is one of the most common types of additive manufacturing available. Uh, we're going to discuss the misconceptions of the technology, the use cases, and how it can benefit your manufacturing operations. Okay, so we have a printer that you brought with you today, and I see it over there printing something. So something that we're going to use later in the show, that's going to be kind of fun. Let's go over there and take a look at this printer. Tell us about it. Okay, gentlemen, tell us about this new technology and this machine you brought with you today. Of course. And before we actually get into the tech of it, I'm gonna make a quick note that this is not actually new technology. Ah, okay. So these 3D printers have been around since the mid 80s. And what's actually new is that this technology where we're adding a continuous fiber within the part to make it a composite. That's new within the last decade or so. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that continuous fiber is what's making this capable of being an end use part. Oh, okay, all right, I get it. So, Jacob, tell us the details of this. Yeah, so this is a fused filament fabrication 3D printer. Mm -hmm. We're working off of a nylon six based filament that's filled with chopped carbon fiber, which is stored in this dry box. Mm -hmm. Okay. That material is fed up to the top of the machine and it's pushed through this drag chain and deposited by the print head. The print head is functioning similarly to like a really small hot glue gun where we're finely depositing material around the machine. So because we can put material where we want, we can achieve much more complex geometries than we could with traditional mm. subtractive and molding processes because we're not worried about overhangs and draft angles and being able to get a part out of a mold or getting a tool in to cut. Oh, very cool. So. Where's the information coming from? Where's the brains? How does it know what to do? So everything starts with the engineer's CAD file that they're already using in their traditional manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. That CAD file is put into a slicer, which chops it up into very fine layers. Those layers are converted into G-code, which is sent to the machine, which tells it where to deposit all the material. And that information is then sent to the machine via Wi-Fi or a USB drive. Wait, you said Wi-Fi? So I, I could be like be sitting in my house somewhere and send the file to a manufacturing facility somewhere? Correct. 
That's absolutely correct. And we can even do that one step further. What we found is that a lot of our customers will have engineering all in one part of the country, but manufacturing across the country or even across the globe. With this technology, as long as it's connected to the internet, you can have your engineers designing the parts and then everyone at these facilities printing them. And the people operating it, it's as simple as taking the part off of the build plate, making sure there's enough material in there, and then that's it. That's it. Yeah. So all controlled by the engineer sitting at his desk anywhere in the world. Sure. Yeah, or your maintenance technicians in your facility. It doesn't necessarily have to be the engineer. Wow, that's okay. That's fantastic. You brought some really cool parts. Let's talk about them. Okay, gentlemen, you brought a lot of really interesting parts with you today. I see a lot of cool things on the table. Tell us about some of these. When most people think about 3D printed parts, they think about ones like what we have here in the center of the table. They look very cool, uh, they're very complex, uh, they'd be very difficult to produce in other forms of manufacturing, but they're really not that useful uh, to us as tools or any end use type of parts. Talk more about the metals though, because I didn't know that you could 3D print in metals, and I'm seeing, I know, copper on the table, and what else do we have here in the way of metals? We have 17.4 uh, pH stainless steel. We have A2, D2, and H13 tool steels. We have a uh, high purity copper, and I believe there's some Inconel 718 floating around in the pile here somewhere as well. I've talked to other customers about this. They had no idea we could do metals. That to me is pretty cool. Another thing that people are generally unaware of is that we can print composite materials that actually have similar, if not better, strength properties than certain types of metals. So in the front, we've got a couple different composites like fiberglass, uh, Kevlar, and carbon fiber. Okay. And those are continuous fibers throughout the part. So when we wow. fill up a part with carbon fiber, we can get a part that is both stronger and lighter weight than the 6061 aluminum. Excellent. So Jacob, you got a special part you brought with us today with a cool story behind it. Tell us about that. Yeah, so this was a part that I designed in May of 2020. Uh, we worked with a company that makes commercial airline refueling equipment. Mm -hmm. They decided at the beginning of the pandemic that they were gonna make a dramatic shift in a product offering they had to create a product to go on to commercial airlines and do a spray disinfectant in a very large volume. Important, important. Yeah. yeah. Something had to be done quick. Exactly. In May of last year when they had contacted us about this, they had a two-part uh, injection mold assembly that had an additional six to eight fasteners attached to it to bolt it together and then it to the main assembly. And the issue that they were having was they had a both a long lead time of 10 to 15 weeks to get a prototype tool made for this. And they had um, just the cost associated with that. It's like, it was a big risk to say that we're gonna pivot and try and make this not knowing if this is gonna be a long-term sustainable thing. Yeah, nobody could afford the risk. So let me see that for yeah. just a second. So I like to take thing, you, so I can take this apart and there's multiple pieces here? No, that is a one part assembly that has been optimized for additive manufacturing. So that part can be printed and taken off the machine and installed on the final unit without any need for post-processing, adhesives, fasteners, it's All just in ready one to go. Piece, multiple items into one piece. Correct. It's going to wow. be able to be bashed around. It has an incredibly high impact resistance, so it's going to survive many, many years in commercial usage. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. So inside of this, in the original part that they gave us, it's a cup, and then this piece here was a separate part that had an impeller that's similar to this in the middle of the table. So we took that combine it into one, and then optimize the internal structure of it to be 3D printed. That's fantastic, and call savings, quick, critical application, I love that. And you know, the really cool thing about this is because it's a 3D printed part, yeah. if you have a service division at the airport where this yeah. is, they could have the printer, and instead of waiting for the replacement part to come in, that could be printed on site, same day, in four and a half hours, have the part and have the machine back in service. So kind of as needed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So that's supply chain just in time to a whole nother exactly. level. Exactly. 
Wow, fantastic. So you keep talking about strength. So we have a uh, finished part here that uh, you saw on the printer earlier, and you're telling me that this is a strong part, right? Right. Okay, I'm gonna put you to the test. So we're gonna do something fun. Are you ready? Oh yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, I said we were gonna do something fun, so we brought the ATV in off the ranch, and, but you know what? I've got an Uncle Mo story. So, they didn't have these fine machines back in the 1960s, so what did Mo do? He made his own all-terrain vehicle out of heavy steel. So, I can just imagine if he would've had one of these 3D printers, what he could've done with this. So, let's take a look at the strength of this hook that we saw earlier on the table. Let's see what it does. All right, guys, you say it's strong. So as Randy is bringing this up, I'll, I'll just reiterate where the strength is coming from on this part. And so essentially, like we mentioned earlier with composites, there's carbon fiber routed throughout that part, which is acting like rebar in concrete. So the carbon fiber throughout this part is giving it its strength. And obviously it worked out. It, it, you know, it looks fantastic. So that's incredible. So I can imagine with that type of strength, the things that customers can do with this material and the 3D printer. So in conclusion, we can produce strong end use parts such as tooling, jigs, and fixtures. We can also shorten potential line down situations by bringing printing in house pulling parts from our digital inventory and printing them in a number of hours instead of waiting several days for them to arrive. Those are great points, Carter. We can also go and reduce our total number of parts in an assembly and increase our complexity in design due to the freedom we have. By reducing that complexity in design and the total number of parts, we could also have the potential to reduce our total number of vendors. Wow, all with 3D printing. 3D printing, concept to fully functional parts in hours. That's definitely worth knowing. I want to thank our guests today, Jacob and Carter from the Worth Additive Group for joining us on the show. They contributed a lot to our education on 3D printing. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes on fastener finishes.